It's that time of year again when the leaves start falling, the roads become slippier, the air is colder, and certain idiots seem to come out of their parents' basements. What is worth more, art or life? Oh, shut up. Everyone loves a bit of practicality, especially these days where we all seem to be tightening our belts and watching our pennies ever closer. But a lot of us, myself included, also love performance. And so if you can combine these two elements into one car, you're not only smart, but you're quids in. Now, of course, there's a plethora of performance estate cars that can do this job very well. However, I'm partial to off-road cars, SUVs. And so here's five performance SUVs that can be had for under 10K, some of which I bet you've forgotten or didn't even know about. BMW didn't make an X5M until 2009, and those are fetching well over our budget even now, close to £20,000. But what many people don't realise is that they made something pretty close and that can be had within our budget, the X548i. So therefore, the BMW X548iS is first on today's list. The X5 made its first appearance in 1999 as the E53 model and was a monumental success for the company. I think these early X5s have aged incredibly well and the engines available split between petrol and diesel range from 3 to 4.8 litres. We're of course talking today about the 4.8 litre naturally aspirated 48iS. The 48iS was produced in the E53 generation car for just a couple of years between 2005 and 2006. Later, for the 2007 model year car, there was the 48i. This can actually be had within our 10k budget too, however was ever so slightly down on power compared to the earlier 48iS, so let's focus on that. Although the X5M would be the ultimate performance SUV BMW to have from this era, as mentioned, they can't be bought for much less than 20k. The X5M's performance, however, was staggering with 547 horsepower and a sub 5 second 0 to 60 time made available from its turbocharged 4.4 litre engine. Our significantly cheaper X548iS, though, is no slouch, still provides a lovely 360 horsepower and a 0 to 60 time of just 6.1 seconds. What's more is that they can be had for under 5k, let alone 10. There's actually one example available on Auto Trader in the UK right now for just £2,500. If you spent our whole 10k budget though, expect to get a gorgeous example like this with well under 80k miles, a great spec and full BMW service history. These cars are generally very well specified too with things like rear heated seats and some even available with seven seats. I personally am a massive fan of this car and know for sure I would love to drive one or maybe even own one one day. Now we're seriously talking. The next on my list today is the absolutely ferocious 507 horsepower 6.2 litre V8 Mercedes ML63 AMG Monster. Now straight off the bat, I must admit right now on the market, the cheapest example is advertised for just under £12,000. However, every now and then these bonkers cars do fall within our 10 grand budget. This wonderful car also sprung into existence during the golden noughties era. Introduced in 2006 at the North American International Auto Show, the ML63 used the already state-of-the-art W164 platform to house its gargantuan 6.2 litre M156 V8 engine, and therefore becoming the most powerful naturally aspirated V8 SUV in the world. Zero to 60 was just 4.8 seconds, and the car produced an outrageous 630 newton meters of torque. There weren't a huge amount of these cars sold, especially in the UK market, where we are much more fuel conscious due to the crazy prices here, meaning they are as rare as a trustworthy politician. But that does mean if you can find one, you know you're driving something super special. Be prepared to average around 15 miles per gallon though, and make sure to budget extra for tyres as these cars love to gobble rubber. For number three on our list today, and possibly my personal favourite, we of course have to mention the 955 generation Porsche Cayenne Turbo S. Produced only during the model years of 2006 and 2007, these are also extremely rare. Now, if you thought the ML63 was unhinged, Wait until you hear this. 
The Porsche Cayenne Turbo S produced 521 horsepower and 720 newton meters of torque from its 4.5 litre turbocharged engine. Not only did it match the ML63's 0 to 60 time at just a shade under 5 seconds, the Cayenne would accelerate all the way to a top speed of 168 miles per hour. Completely unheard of for an SUV in 2006. At the time, the 955 Cayenne Turbo S was the second most powerful road car ever built by Porsche, only second to the Porsche Carrera GT, which as we all know has become an undisputed icon and regularly commands prices over a million pounds today. Over the standard turbo, which was already an animal of a car, the Turbo S featured upgraded brakes with the discs increased in size from 350 to 380 millimeters at the front and 330 to 358 at the back. As this was Porsche's flagship at the time, all of the interior services, bar a very few, were finished in leather. Every seat was heated and cooled, and all cars featured Porsche's Bi-Xenon adaptive curb headlights and Bose sound system. Needless to say, this is a serious car even by today's standards, and one that you can buy for less than 10 grand. This one I found on Auto Trader priced at just over 8,000, comes with full service history and 141,000 miles on the clock. I think it's worth the money just for that gorgeous tan interior alone. And if I'm completely honest with you, if the money was sitting in a bank account of mine right now, I would go and buy that car immediately. This next one is really exciting. I'd never even heard of it before researching for this video. Let me give you some clues. It was first released in 2006. It contains a 6.1 litre V8, does 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds, and when new, only cost 39 99 99 99 99. It's of course America's card on today's table, the Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8. With its muscular bodywork, wide side skirts, and lowered ride height, there's no fooling anyone that this thing is a bit of a brute. With its 6.1 litre all-American 420 horsepower V8 engine, it's probably the best sounding car on our list today. With its twin centrally mounted exhaust and muscle car underpinnings, it's like nothing else on our list. This 2006 example with just 83,000 miles on the clock can be had for nine and a half grand, and there's no denying that that's a lot of car for the money. Being an American-made car, you can expect a lot of creature comforts inside and also cup holders that actually fit a bottle of water. On the other hand, expect to receive miles per gallon figures that are literally negative and to spend a bit of extra time looking for a reputable garage or service center that knows these cars. Otherwise, if you want something a little bit different and definitely that is a conversation starter, this could be a great choice for you. Lastly then, and one that quite simply had to be on this list, is the V10 diesel Volkswagen Tourer tour Rag. Tourer tour Rag. Tourer Rag. Tourer Rag. Tourer Rag. This offers performance not necessarily in straight line speed, like the others on this list, but in sheer unrelenting grunt. This thing has a brain warping 750 newton meters of torque. Okay, there's things around now with much more than that, but this car you have to remember was available almost 20 years ago now in 2003. One big bonus of being a diesel, which this car has on all of the others that we've spoken about today, is the fuel economy, with a claimed average of 24 miles per gallon. It's essentially a Prius compared to the gas guzzlers on our list today. Now this Touareg of course shares its chassis with the aforementioned Porsche Cayenne, however looking inside the Touareg the interior looks very Bentley, with some of the switch gear looking very familiar in the later release Bentley Continental GT. As you might imagine the V10 Touaregs at least on the UK market are very few and far between, but occasionally higher mileage examples can be picked up for as little as 4 or 5 grand. VW did actually make a W12 Touareg during a similar period, but these are even harder to find and a little pricier. Considering the performance, the luxury inside, and the relative driving affordability that can be had with this car being a diesel, I think this is a genuinely great choice if your performance SUV desires air slightly more on the side of practicality. And so with that, that is it for today's list. Please do comment below on which car you would choose from this list, 
and also let me know if there's anything you think I've missed. If you want to see more videos like this, then make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, but also for imminent updates on my newly acquired V8 1999 Jaguar S-Type. In fact, if you don't know what I'm talking about, click in the top right hand of the screen now to see the video where I bought that car. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you very, very soon.